Welcome to Fading Memories, a podcast with advice, wisdom, and hope from caregivers who have lived the experience and survived to tell the tale. Think of us as your caregiver best friend. Welcome back, Fading Memories listeners. As always, I so appreciate you giving me a little bit of your time today. Hope to make it totally worth your while. With us is Bianca Padilla. She is one of the founders of CareWell. We're going to be talking about how her caregiving journey brought her to start this company. And we're going to touch a little bit on maybe how we can help support more women caregivers. So thanks for joining me, Bianca. Whew, I got it all out. <laughs> Hi, Jennifer, and thank you so much for having me on. You're welcome. So tell us about you and your caregiving journey and how that led to CareWell. We'll just jump yeah. right in. Absolutely. So um, I'll go back in time. I, I actually studied economics at NYU, and I always knew that entrepreneurship was something that I wanted to pursue. And in fact, when I was in college, I started my first company. It was a virtual piggy bank that helped kids save money. Uh, it never took off, but it helped me pinpoint the gaps in my skill set that I needed to address uh, to make sure that I knew that I had what it took to build a successful business one day. So after college, I moved back home to Miami into my mom's house to study software engineering. And since I was one of the skill sets that I realized early on that I needed to master if I wanted to start a company one day. And so that's actually why um, and how I was suddenly thrust into the role of being a caregiver because I moved back home with my mom. Um, and as in many Hispanic families, I was living in a multi-generational, uh, multicultural household speaking different languages. And uh, it was my grandmother, my mom, my sister, and I, as well as three girl dogs. <laughs> oh my. And uh, so <laughs> woman household through and through. And um, my grandmother always had really bad arthritis. She had um, osteoporosis. And at one point she was just in so much pain, she couldn't walk. And she was always very active, always, you know, taking care of us as kids and all of my cousins. And so she decided to have hip surgery to find some relief. Um, unfortunately, her post-surgery journey was very rough. Um, she ended up staying pretty much immobile even to this day and, and, and can really only walk a few feet with a lot of help. Um, and at the time, and even today, we live in a multi-story uh, house. Even her room to get to it requires a few steps to, to get into. And so it was really just an uphill battle for my mom and I as we tried to figure out how to best accommodate uh, her situation. And, and of course, we have zero experience caring for somebody. Um, and so we were left searching for answers, right? We, we're not, not nurses or doctors. Like this is our first time. And, um, of course we have no idea what products even exist, much less how to use them and where to find them. And we had nobody to turn to for the guidance and support we needed. The advice that doctors and nurses gave us, they it only went so far. They're not product experts. They don't know how to outfit somebody's home. Um, it's, you know, caring for someone in a home setting is very different than in an institutional care facility. And so it was really an overwhelming experience that we were just completely underprepared for. And, um, you know, we were trying to do the best for my grandmother while also learning how to navigate the challenges, uh, the emotional challenges, financial challenges, the, the medical challenges that come with being a caregiver. That's crazy. And the uh, one question that popped into my head is you have three generations of women under the same roof. Yep. How do you navigate that? Because I, my experience is as one, you, when you have that many adult women, you have a lot of conflict because everybody seems to want to be in charge. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a lot of screaming that goes on. Um, <laughs> so that, I don't know if it helps or hurts, uh, but it is certainly a lot of fun especially as we got older, when I moved home, my sister was still in high school. Um, now it's a little nicer when you go home and everyone can have a glass of wine, tends to just soften everybody up. Um, you know, you can get in front of the TV and watch some series together. So, you know, we're still navigating some of those challenges that certainly uh, <laughs> make it harder. Um, but at the same time, the caregiving has united us. I, I happen to think my grandmother is extremely funny and has tons of, um, of energy still and has really great stories. And so I, you know, I try to look at it very positively. Um, but none of us are easy. None of us that are is, easy. <laughs> that is true. I do think 
as you were answering the question, I was like, well, maybe the caregiving unites everybody and that helps because everybody's kind of got at least one shared focus yeah. versus you're doing your thing. Mom's doing her thing. Grandma's doing her thing. Sister's doing her thing. You got people going in all these different directions and ev inevitably they end up clashing and competing. So that's kind of helpful it, to we know. We work together, right? So my mom, obviously she has to do the groceries for my grandmother and make sure that she's fed. So my sister or I will pitch in, we'll go to the, you know, we can walk to the grocery store, which is nice, pick things up. We cook for each other. So, you know, it's, it's kind of like a communal living situation and, and it ends up being nice and, and fun. You know, I, I tend to think it'd be boring <laughs> if you were yeah. just home alone <laughs> with nobody to eat with. Um, but it also puts it in perspective because you have, um, you know, you're watching somebody that you love decline. Um, you know, we're all going to die one day. And it's so it, it puts into perspective that this is the time I get to spend with my mom, that, uh, you know, this is the time I get to spend with my sister. Um, now I'm married, so I don't live at home anymore. Um, but you know, those are the moments that, that you're sometimes you're in and you don't recognize is like, these are one of the few moments in life that I'll get to live with you again, that I get to spend this time so closely. So I think it helped me put, put it in, into perspective. And every time I go home, right. I really savor that, that time, um, with my mom, with my sister, when, when my sister allows me to, to love her. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate. I have a sister that sounds similar to that. <laughs> so I'm going to throw you a giant curveball. I was having a conversation with another guest last week. And basically the conversation went in a completely different direction from what we had decided we were going to talk about, which is always thrilling, but it was really interesting and one of the biggest challenges that families have when an emergency happens and all of a sudden they're thrust into caregiving, because I don't know anybody that's planned this out. So if you're out nope. there, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> but my thought was it's twofold. One, too many families don't take advantage of hospice early enough. But my mom had Alzheimer's for 20 years. So obviously oh, hospice yeah. wasn't going to be a thing when she was in her 60s. And, but I think we need to start advocating and I don't even know where to get this ball rolling. That's why I'm throwing this out here. What do you think about the doctor's ability to say your loved one has this severe life limiting disease with your grandmother? It's the osteoporosis. My mom, it was early onset Alzheimer's and they just immediately put you on palliative care. I think that would keep people out of the hospital. It would keep... I don't want to say useless, but unproductive doctor visits to a minimum. I think the yeah. money that we save on one side of the ledger could go to paying for palliative care. And I don't know, that's just been on my mind <laughs> since we've had that conversation because there are no real solutions. It's like, yeah. well, here's a pamphlet, good luck, or call the Alzheimer's Association mm -hmm. or even less. So what do you think of that idea? So yeah, that'd be a wonderful idea. I don't think insurance companies will ever cover it. It's super, super expensive. Uh, the, I mean, if, when you look at the stats, the cheapest option for people uh, is aging in place, right? So everybody in the healthcare system is shifting now to figure out how do we keep people in their homes? Because guess what? It's free labor, right? You yeah, have that's the biggest caregivers. problem. That's well, palliative problem. care is supports the family and the caregiver. It's not moving them out of their oh, yeah, home. Yeah. Um, it's like hospice, yes, but it's not right. end of life care. It's, I mean, with hospice, you uh, cease life saving medications with palliative care. You don't. So it's like palliative care is a step between where you and I are likely at and hospice. So yep. I, and so that that's, that's why I'm saying they'd rather you be that full-time unpaid caregiver. Then oh, oh, definitely. Cover, right. So T to them, it's it's almost like being in a nursing facility, right? Um, except for without the rent. And again, it's it's kind of like <laughs> this shift towards remote work, right? Now yeah. companies don't have to have, uh, you know, they don't have to provide you lunch. They don't have to have the lights and the electricity and the Wi-Fi. All of that burden is getting shift to um, the 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 employees. Now, I think in the employee benefit, they benefit, right? You don't have to buy work clothes. <laughs> <laughs> which is always nice. Yeah. You don't have to drive in and spend money on gas. And there's huge savings that you can have um, cooking at your home. So I think there's some benefits there. Uh, on the flip side, there, there aren't many benefits 
um, especially when you have a disease state that takes hold of somebody for, for so many years, right? And requires so much work on behalf of families and friends um, who really need to rally around and, and support them. And so I think it's a wonderful idea. I think don't hold my breath. <laughs> Don't hold my breath, right? Uh, it's it's why we exist is to serve and support caregivers because we know how expensive it is, and not just how expensive. There's a massive um, labor shortage, right? In in nursing and home care. So even if we wanted to, we couldn't. There's not enough people. Mm-mm. There's not it's enough just people getting worse. to go, and it's just going to get worse. And so again, that's why the second thing is like I wouldn't hold my breath because just there's a there's a, a money issue. The states, the government, and, and uh, insurance companies, they don't want to pay for it. It's very expensive, especially when there's an option to, to shift to, to the uh, families. And then on the flip side, there's not enough people, even if we wanted to. Um, that is true. So it's, I, it's unfortunate, you know, and I think there needs to be a lot of innovation in this space in order to um, advocate on the behalf of caregivers and in order to give them the tools and the resources they need to do that. Because I think fundamentally, it's just not going to change, unfortunately. And so it's going to be up to us, you know, and it's, it's a little bit depressing to be honest, yeah. you know, well, I was um, just reading how I was reading about the caregiver shortage and they were talking about the year 2030, which I will be 64. So they talk about people 65 and older and the shortage. And I'm like, yikes, I'm, <laughs> I'm in deep trouble if I need yeah. care. And then they're talking about how, you know, 70% of p- aging adults are going to need care. And, you know, we've got this very large generation that's that's going to need care and you know it wasn't a thing they talked about when they were younger and so oh my god it's i i don't think supporting caregivers is going you know in a fundamental like so, not society but a you know a, just on a fundamental level not just shifting it to like free family care until politicians and businesses realize how much it's sucking out of our economy Exactly. And that's, that's where it's, we're going to see the, sh- the change is because this demographic is important to the labor force, which is also already under intense, intense demand for labor that we just don't have. So pile on in the next decade, the amount of people who are going to be impacted in our own company, we've got about 120 employees and every day somebody is impacted by caregiving. They have to take time off. Uh, a parent gets sick uh, on top of already the, the, the shortage when it comes to being new parents and the struggles that, that are around that. And so, I mean, it, it's, it's going to be, I, I'd say the next 10 years is going to be really interesting in how we have to shift um, our priorities as a nation to support not, not new parents, but actually this much larger demographic of caregivers, right? The aging, because by 2034, there's going to be more people over the age of 65 than under the age of 18. So just yep. think about that shift. 18 years old. I mean, when when you have kids, you know, it's it's a one or two year period where it's very stressful in your life. But when, when you have somebody who's sick, that's much longer many times. And that's a lot harder of, of something to deal with because you're not prepared, right? You didn't sign up for this like you did with, with a child and you're excited. And and three, it's not the beginning of life, right? It's the end. And so it's it's it's, it's very sad and it's, it's emotional and it's overwhelming. Um, so, you know, it, again, it's, it's why we started this company because there's just fundamentally such so many challenges that need to be solved. There's so much innovation in the space that needs to be created. And um, we're completely obsessed with the caregiver and figuring out how to make uh, their caregiving time more useful, more impactful so that they can take a breather. So they can appreciate the the last moments with their parent um, rather than just feel like they're drowning. Yeah. So that was a perfect segue into explaining exactly why you started CareWell. And then you could tell us all all about it because even I'm probably less familiar with it than I should be. (laughs) Sure. So, so like I mentioned, you know, uh, my experience caring for my grandmother as a first time caregiver with no experience, having no idea, um, really opened my eyes to just the lack of support, the lack of guidance that existed for caregivers. Of course, you know, I, we reached out to doctors and nurses, their advice is quite limited. So we go online, we go, you know, there's what, I don't even know what stores you'd go to. You go online, 
And there's just nothing that tells you how to do things. Um, and I always go back to, there's just so many resources for new parents. There's so many blogs and communities and YouTube videos. There's so much innovation in the products, the, the strollers, the lightweight, the heavy ones, the, you know, every single thing you can imagine, the food. Um, but there's none of this for caregivers, even though this is going to be a much, much, much greater uh, and larger demographic than the baby population, right? Um, and also the fact that the majority of, of caregivers in the US, they have no formal training. So they're not doctors, they're not nurses, they're just everyday people like, like me, right? Like you. Um, and so after my grandmother recovered, I ended up going on a first date with my now husband, John. And he mentioned that he had recently won a business competition during his MBA program for an adult diaper subscription service. And I thought it was an incredible idea because it's something I could have really used while I was caring for my grandmother and, and managing the diapers and figuring out even what it is she wanted. She was so picky. Uh, and so after our conversation, I started researching the caregiving industry and the aging demographics and the challenges that we're just talking about that society is going to face with uh, this impending demographic shift that's slowly happening as the baby boomer cohort begins uh, turning 65 or older. And that's when I realized, whoa, I'm not the only one going through this. In fact, there's 53 million caregivers. That's one in, in you know, one in five uh, that are supporting in some way or another their families. And in fact, almost 90% of all of the care and support that's received by the aging population comes from inexperienced family members. That's not going to shift anytime soon, right? Which we were, again, just talking about. So that's how John and I decided that CareWell really needed to be the, uh, the most trusted and guiding source uh, for support products for this uh, population of caregivers, right? There's plenty of retailers out there, but we set out to provide, again, a customer uh a caregiver obsessed platform that they can speak to us 24 seven. They can get not just the product guidance, but also the emotional support and a sense of community uh, so that they don't feel like they're ever alone. We're always there for them. It's like we're caring for the caregiver. Uh, and that really makes a, a really big impact in their life. Um, and so at a high level, carewell.com offers a huge and growing selection of home health and wellness products. We offer 24-7 customer service. Uh, it's available English and Spanish over uh, chat. You can talk to us over email, phone calls, any what, Facebook messenger. Um, and we also have a library of resources that help caregivers through their journey. Um, and so it ranges from different topics from like Alzheimer's or Parkinson's all the way to a product-specific advice. You know, how do I choose the best adult diaper product, for example? Um, and what really sets us apart is that we're not only helping caregivers find the products that they need at the price points to fit their budget, because these, these uh, products can range, but we also go above and beyond and really provide this personalized experience. So when you speak to a person over the phone, they're helping you and your unique problem, uh, which you can't find anywhere else, right? And so we've heard and we have so many thousands of hours of experience working with doctors and nurses and product manufacturers to be able to explain you know, why and how to use these products and why this one in particular will help this particular need that you have. We also have all of the reviews and all of the feedback from our caregiving community who's told us, yes, this product is the best for this thing. And that's really unique, right? Because it's, it's, caregiving, it's caregiver authenticated and approved. Um, and so, you know, caregivers, caregiving specialists, they go through over a hundred hours of product training and empathy training. Um, but really what makes such a, a big impact is, is that we're able to leverage the community, um, and, and, um, and their feedback and their advice to advise our customers. So it, it really is this, this big, um, caregiving community. And so we've recently also just launched, um, online community across our social media platforms so on Facebook. And Instagram and YouTube, where caregivers can come together. We've got an influencer a network and feel heard and get advice and feel like they're not alone. And that's very important when you're dealing with such an emotional and overwhelming time in your life. Um, 
And it also helps us really um, keep our finger on the pulse of the needs of the caregiving community so that we can always uh, evolve and respond uh, to meeting those needs. I don't think that knowing about you guys would have been beneficial. My mom became urine incontinent kind of overnight. So of course I just went to the CVS and bought the brand that most people end up buying. And it wasn't until after she passed away, I learned about other brands and better brands. So of course that, that didn't do either of us any good. She didn't seem to have an issue with the brand that I chose. So I guess we were okay, but again, it was only, it was less than a year that she okay. needed the product. So, yeah. and we didn't, ha- well, it wasn't until she fell and broke her leg right okay. at the very start of the pandemic. That was fun. And we, when she returned to the care home from the hospital, I had put hospice in place because I wanted her to have extra support uh, with, well, I wanted mom and the care team to have extra support because, you know, it just, it was an emergency. She fell, she broke her leg. Now she's bed bound. You know, it was like overnight, everything changed. And, you know, the, it's very similar to families. It's like their situation didn't change now, except that my mom was going to need more care. Um, when I called hospice, I did not expect my mom to pass away, which she did. But when the the caregiver that was mostly in charge of my mom's care, she told me that they needed the the tab um, yeah. incontinence briefs. And I was like, uh, where do I go get those? Because, of course, this was literally right at the beginning of right just like days before the lockdown. Yeah. And I was like, I don't I've never seen those. I don't know where to get them. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know. Like the whole world is turned upside down in multiple ways. I'm confused. And thankfully for me, the hospice nurse was right there and she said, don't worry about it. We'll take care of that. I never had to figure that out. So that was a huge blessing because I guess I would have, you know, not knowing about you guys that, you know, this was obviously March of 2020. I would have just gone on Amazon and prayed. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, and, and uh, that's, that's not generally how I shop. <laughs> yeah. That's part of how, how we help. Right. It's, it's, it's discovering. And that was one of the hardest things that I, I remember was just like, I don't even know like how to find products, you know, cause there are things that are out there that help you change people and make sure that you don't develop bed sores and make sure that the skin integrity is, is, is healthy and that your, you know, your mom is clean and feels clean. Um, in, in that particular case, right. Not dealing with, you know, all the other issues that come with it. And that's where we can come in and step in and say, here's how you can do a better job, right? Here's how you can make your mom more comfortable. Um, because so many of us just don't know. Uh, and so, yeah. So what type, so you said, do do you have an example of like, you said, it's basically caregiver approved. That's not quite the right word you used, but how, if I was, if I, it's early and it's Monday, <laughs> if I was to go on your website and search for tab incontinence, I'm not going to call them diapers because that's what we not, we don't call them that, but the tab open incontinence briefs, what would I find? Like, how would I know I want this, you know, this, like, you know, everybody goes on Amazon, they'd say, I want four stars or better and this pro, you know, so there's a search parameters. How does that work with you guys with the caregiver reviews? That's the word I was looking for. Sure. So there's a few ways, right? You can go on our site and we actually have uh, one of our uh, highest um, viewed blog posts is around how to select uh, the best adult brief. Uh, so you can self-guide that way. We also have chat on site or, or you can call in and it really just depends, right? They'll ask you a series of questions uh, to figure out, you know, is your mom bed bound? What type of incontinence? Is it urinary? Is it bowel? Um, what have you been using? And, and just ask a series of questions uh, to determine, you know, do you have a particular issue? Is there, uh, you know, is quality concern? Um, some people are, are immobile and they just have no feeling. So it matters less to them. Some people are very particular. They don't want to feel wet. So we have certain products for that. So um, our care team is trained to ask specific questions uh, to, to get a sense of how we can best guide you to the right product. So once once you go through that, they'll they'll offer you typically a good, better, best option. Um, here's a, a good, you know, great price. I think you'll be happy. 
uh, better. And here's the very, very best if, if that's where, where you want to go. Um, that way you have a, a choice. And then we also have a really convenient auto ship program. And so you can sign up for our auto ship program. You get 30% off your first order. And then each subsequent order on uh, the brands that are on our auto ship and save 5% program, you get a, a recurring 5%. And so you can cancel it at any time. You can you know, skip de and delay deliveries and all that. But it's really helpful for caregivers to just check off one thing from their to-do list and just know it's getting sent out. We send you emails three days before, one day before, reminding you, hey, if you have enough or if you need them now, go ahead and, and you can make your decision. And so, um, again, just supporting them in every way. And then the good thing is, of course, you know, you have your credit card on file. You can go ahead and send us a text saying, hey, I need, need more, right? You don't even have to visit our website and we'll say, we got you. And we'll send out a new case and we'll just, you know, uh, charge your credit card. So really it's like, uh, we're part of your care team. Now that would be awesome. We have used a similar service for dog food for, Ooh, well, it was one of the dogs I have now didn't exist. Then we started with the, yeah, well, I've had six golden retrievers. So numbers three and four, yes, three and four. We started with them. Um, Number three died in 2017 and number four died in um, 2020. Oh, sorry, so, so it's been a while. And part of it, part of the reasoning for that is, you know, because of course it feels a little bit lazy and it's like, you should support your local business and lot da da da. Cause I could buy the dog food at Ace Hardware and the Ace Hardware was just down the block from the gym. Do you think I ever managed to get dog food when you know, we'd be like, oh, we're getting low on dog food. Oh, we're going to have to get dog food the next day or so. Oh, we need dog food. Oh, crap. We're out of dog food. You know, so, yeah. I mean, it's just just having, the, like you said, taking that one um, one thing off your list, you know, just getting out. You're like, if you if you can get out of the house without your loved one, don't go to the store, you know, I mean, let's, or go to the store for you. You don't have, you shouldn't have to do chores. So I like that. And I like yeah. that you can text because I've got a couple things on similar subscription auto ship. And it's like, I think I need to adjust because, you know, one of them's makeup and it's like, I've got brand new, you know, brand new just opened and then a whole spare backup. So it's like, I think, I think I need to adjust that. It would be really nice if I could just text them, but yeah. So yeah, you guys taking it one step better. So... One of the things that I've recently read is why caregivers um, end up hospitalized or die before their loved one. Yeah. And we all assume, and we're correct mostly on that is because of stress. It's also, I'm sure you probably have heard of the, um, like the, it's, it's basically like heartbreak disease. You're, Contest, you've you've heard stories about people living or their their spouse of 50 some odd years passes away and then they die soon after mm -hmm. and they say it's like broken heart disease that is actually affecting caregivers so i would hope that a service like yours it's not going to help the broken heart but maybe just reducing the stress will help give caregivers time to deal with the emotional end because I think mm -hmm. that's hard to find that time. Now we're going to take a quick break for an ad. These ads help me continue to bring the show to you for free. When I learned that despite eating as healthy as possible, we can still have undernourished brains, I was frustrated. I also live in a farming community, so I'm aware that our food isn't grown as well as we need. Learning about Neuro Reserves, Relevate, and how it's formulated to fix this problem convinced me to give them a try. Now I know many of you are skeptical, as was I. However, I know it's working because of one simple change. My sweet tooth is gone. I didn't expect that, and it's not something other users have commented on, but here's some truth. My brain always wanted something sweet. Now fruit usually did the trick, but not always. One bad night's sleep would fire up my sugar cravings so much they were almost impossible to ignore. You ever have your brain screaming for a donut? Well, for me, those days are gone. It's been about six months since I started taking the supplement and I have no regrets. I believe in my results so much that I'm passing on my 15% discount to you. Try it for two or three months and see if you have a miraculous sweet tooth cure 
or maybe just better focus and clarity. It's definitely worth a try. Now back to our conversation. Oh, absolutely. I always say a lot of the service that we provide is that emotional support, right? That's that's so often missing because it's a taboo subject. We don't really talk about it. Um, and, you know, they're embarrassed to talk about it too. They don't want to burden anybody else. And so part of our training, that 100 hours of training that our, our customer care team goes through is around how do I emotionally support this person who's going through one of the most difficult times in your life is caring for somebody, right? If, if not the most difficult um, and watching somebody in decline. And so um, that's why we think that, and we believe that the, the caregiving community that we're building is so important because so much of it is you're doing this uh, thankless work in, behind closed doors in a home, right? Um, and nobody sees it, nobody appreciates it. So a lot of what we do is, is say, thank you. You're doing a great job, right? We're here to support you and, and make you feel heard and seen. And, and that's, that's really important. You know, no, other retailers don't do that. They're like, okay, mm. thanks for buying a product. <laughs> yeah. Don't if even you know who the- you are, yeah. right? <laughs> um, in our case, you know, it's, it's about building this emotional connection, this relationship, with this person, because what we're all doing is we're all caregivers, right? And that's why I say we're caregiver obsessed um, because we've been there. We've, we've felt alone. We felt overwhelmed and scared, right? When you you're have a cancer, when your mom's diagnosed with cancer or Alzheimer's, I mean, your heart just stops. You don't even, you're just shocked. And we've been in those moments and we get you, right? And we want to make sure that everybody feels as part of this because there are a lot, there's 50 million Americans who are dealing with this. And why is it that we feel so alone? We feel so overwhelmed. We shouldn't, right? It's, it's, it's just like, um, you know, when you have a new ba- a newborn baby where people rally around you mm-hmm. or you have, um, uh, what are they, the, the baby gifts, the registries, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, like, why do we do that for the registries, but we don't do that. And so that's what we're trying to usher in is this new cultural change and shift and mentality to celebrate this person's life and to celebrate the fact that, you know, we have the opportunity to care for somebody. Um, You know, some people's parents, they die much earlier and they never get that opportunity to spend, you know, the, such a long life together. And so um, we hope that we can, we can, and we're working very hard to, to change the narrative around caregiving, make it something that's more uplifting, something that we appreciate in the difficulties. Um, And, and we think that, in doing so and in building this community, it'll all help us feel emotionally better and feel healthier and encourage each other to take time off, encourage each other to exercise and, um, and, and, and know that you're doing enough, that you're probably doing too much and uh, that we all need breaks, right? And so I think power of community, we've seen it in so many different industries. And I think it's, it's not needed anymore else than, than in this one. I totally agree. I do see a, a subtle, timid shift at this point. Uh, I don't generally dive into the Facebook caregiver private pages too often because I can't deal with them. But I recently was scrolling through the group tabs. Our new communities got private group pages. So I'm like part of private group pages all the time, which is why I can't disconnect from Facebook like I want to. But this one person said, basically started the question of, you know, well, they started the post with like, I realized I can't do this. This is not for me. I blah, 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 blah. And, you know, who else was out there? And I was shocked at how many people admitted, I can't deal with taking care of my parent. This is, I did not emotionally, physically, mentally, whatever equipped, you know, to do this. And I was pleased, heartened, whatever you want to say, to, to, I didn't read them all, but there was a just a lot of people that were willing to admit, you know, yes, on a private page, but it's still on Facebook that, yeah, you know, I had to put my mom in a care home because I just couldn't deal with it. And that was how I felt. But I, I have, you know, I, I challenge people when they post the whole, you know, to care for somebody who cared for us is such an honor. Okay. Tell me why you feel that way. And then I wait and nobody ever responds. And it's like, don't post this crap unless you have a a valid, like you said, 
you know, you get to experience certain things and hear stories and blah, blah, blah with your mom and your grandmother. And I'm like, yeah, that would have been really nice because you are probably not aware, but my maternal grandmother had vascular dementia. My maternal great grandmother had dementia. So <laughs> I don't have a really good family history on that side, but my paternal grandmother lived to be 103. And at the end of her life, I, when I was visiting, thank God the care home let us come in during COVID because she died in 21. I actually recorded some stories when I could get her to talk about certain specific things. And it's like, you know, sometimes I listen to them. It's still a little bit hard because she was challenging, but it's like, you know, I'm just, I'm so glad that I have, there's a particular story that I'm really super glad that I have. So it's like, I wasn't necessarily caring for her. I, I tried to help my aunt. I tried to do what I could for her. Um, but yeah, I'm just, it's, we got to really support people every direction that they take for caregiving. I always considered myself the captain of mom's care team when she was in the, the memory care residence because it, I didn't abdicate my responsibilities to my mother because somebody else was in charge more often than I was. I was still in charge of everything. And if they weren't doing what they needed to do, I was going to have to make a change somehow. Thankfully, they were great. They put up with a lot of crap from my mom. So it was, you know, all worked out great. But yeah, we definitely need to figure out how to be much more emotionally supportive. I was just witnessing a caregiver on Instagram talking about how, you know, their corporate environment rallies around people who are getting married and having babies, or if somebody's, um, you know, raising money for something or other, and she's experienced the exact opposite. It's like, I had a walk team and I'm the only one that, you know, did this. And it's like, people are afraid to admit that this is a, this is a thing. And we need to, we need to shift that culturally. Yeah. It's like, it's happening. Don't, it's, it's not closing your eyes to it, yeah. pretending that, you know, baby showers are cool. Alzheimer's showers don't exist. You know, osteoporosis, it's like, it is not going to help. So do you guys yeah. have a registry on your, on your site? Not yet. It's something that we're working on. Very good. Good answer. <laughs> cause you know, I've seen, and I'm not a TikToker for mostly cause it, I, it's bad enough that American companies have all of my data. I'm not giving it to the Chinese government too, <laughs> but I see a lot of the millennial caregivers and they make Amazon wish lists and people mm -hmm. send them, you know, ne necessary items, you know, not most of them don't ask for like personal, you know, they're more like personal wellness items. They don't ask for luxury stuff that I've, mm -hmm. nobody has ever admitted they do anyway. And so I'm thinking, you know, we need to like, we need to figure out how, well, obviously we're not going to have an Alzheimer's shower because that just sounds really creepy, but we need to figure out how to, to make a registry like on your site, just as normal as a wedding registry or a baby registry or I don't know. Do college kids do registries? Mine didn't. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> well, they get money when they graduate. So I guess yeah. technically they kind of fund their own registry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, just, but even just as a some way thoughts. for the families to get together, you know, so much of it ends up um, that people don't realize how much um, time and effort goes into caring for somebody. Um, and it doesn't even have to be Alzheimer's for, for the care to, to become expensive. And so you know, pulling together resources, making sure that people know, like, here are all the things actually that I'm paying out of pocket because um, more than 50% of caregivers are actually paying out of their own um, wallets mm -hmm. um, for, for products and, and services and food and groceries for their loved one. And so, you know, making that or bringing that to light and allowing even their own family members to help to contribute, to put together a savings account um, to help plan for these moments is, is, is really important. Most people don't want to talk about it. They don't want to ask for help, but you've got to take care of yourself as well. Right. And that's why, again, the power of community, the power of sharing the frustrations, the power of knowing it's okay if I can't, right. Some people don't have the option to send uh, their loved one to, to, uh, a nursing home or anything like that. It's just too expensive. So they're, they feel trapped and they're angry about it. And yep. so finding a community of people who also feel that way helps you feel like you're not alone, right? 
Um, so it's, it's, it's very emotional. It's also very, it's financial, it's physical, it's mental. I mean, it's all encompassing. Um, <laughs> it's and it's all not of the high get notes. easier. It's all of them. Uh, so there's a lot of ways that we can support each other in, in, in the caregiving community. It's, it's why you do this podcast, right? To yep. share your experience. It's, it's to bring together the community. It's so that others, you know, are aware so that they can prepare so that they can feel part of a larger community. So we just got to keep on doing what we're doing. Yes. And please, somebody put us out of business, right? <laughs> At least me. You probably always will be around, but, you know, maybe we can cure Alzheimer's, prevent Alzheimer's, yeah. and then I can retire. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I really enjoy doing this, but still, it would not hurt my feelings if I got if I got uh, unemployed because we found a cure or whatever. But I, I don't think I don't think that's going to happen in my lifetime. I did originally think that, and if I make it to 103, like my paternal grandmother, I hope I hope it does. But yeah, I'm not sure. They've been they've been looking for a long time, and I'm not sure they're in the right track yet. So. So obviously people can find you at carewell.com. Is there anything else you want people to know? You did mention you guys have a YouTube channel. I'm assuming yep. that's Carewell. Yep. Carewell family is our social media handle. So you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, um, YouTube, et cetera. And I'd, I'd come follow, share your experience, you know, share with your friends. You know, we're building a, a big community. That's why we're going around and, 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 and sharing the word, right. And sharing your podcast with our members as well. And so, uh, it's so important is, is it almost starts with the emotional, right. For you to be a great caregiver, you've got to put a handle on it. You've got to let your frustrations out. Um, a lot of this, 80% of this more than that, 95% maybe is frustration. Um, it's, it's really difficult work to, you know, we, we all know that. And so you can share that with us. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds like an affordable option too. I asked recently on Instagram how many of my followers used a therapist because I I personally notice a generational difference on use yeah. the, that use. And it was about 45%, which kind of surprised me. I, I thought it would be a yeah. tiny bit higher, mm -hmm. but you know, cost and time are definitely issues. So mm -hmm. the fact that you can talk to somebody about, you know, I see a lot of times on, on social media, one of, one of the people's biggest frustrations is dealing with an, any kind of incontinence. You know, nobody likes to change diapers on babies, yeah. on adults, it's 10 times worse. And people that have cognitive issues sometimes don't know what they're doing and they run around with nothing on the bottom half. And that's, <laughs> there's yeah. a lot of challenges yeah, that yeah. way so we've heard it all yeah i'm sure you one have. Important thing. our care teams heard it all uh you know we we provide support around incontinence products but also mobility and safety um feeding grooming personal care uh diets right so the different specialty diets um and if we don't know the answer we'll go and we'll we'll have a nurse on staff We'll go and we'll ask and make sure to get you the right answer. If, if it, there is a uh, an expert that, that's required, we've got a, a massive network of, of doctors that we reach out to, um, again, to get you that answer. So we try to do a lot of the work for you. That sounds terrific. So everybody should definitely check out CareWell or CareWell Family on whatever social media platform of choice for you. Is there any last... Um, advice, comments, suggestions you want to leave the listeners before I let you launch off into your, the rest of your day? I, I, I think we've hit a lot of really good points. <laughs> so as, as best as you can prepare, uh, my, my advice is put away, get together your family and start putting away a little bit of money each month. It's really going to help you when it comes to buying personal care items, when it comes to, to feeding, these are two big um, challenges that people face and, and, it's better to be overprepared than under. So, yeah, I don't think you could be overprepared for caregiving of an aging adult. Yeah. I'd I'd like to think you could. I guess some people could, but most people know most people are not prepared at all, and because it happens in an emergency. So, I'm really excited yeah. that we got to chat today because I knew you guys sold products. I didn't know about the rest of it, 
And that makes me even more excited to share more information about you guys. So I really appreciate you coming on today and sharing what you know, your journey and what your guys are doing to help make those journeys for the rest of us easier. And I really strongly encourage everybody to check them out. The Carewell uh, link for the website, Instagram, and YouTube will be in the show notes. So make it really easy for you guys to check them out also. Well, thank you so much, Jen, for having me. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your favorite podcasts.